guys, welcome to Office Blokes Reacts. I'm Office Bloke Dave. I'm Office Bloke Mike. I'm Office Bloke Daz. Collectively, we are three Office Blokes oversimplified. Three Polish horsemen. Mm. Three Polish horsemen, yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, With wings. I feel like I'm going to have to start this video looking into the camera. Oh, yeah. Looking very, I don't know what the word would be, apologetic. Oh, right. And say it on behalf of all the Office Blokes. I apologise for, you. You, for getting a historical... All right, on behalf of myself, I apologise for getting a historical fact wrong <clears throat> that turned out to oh, be yeah. folklore. You know everyone <laughs> comes to this channel for facts. I know. And you're making shit up. <laughs> it is... Uh, Blatant. <laughs> it is called the three historian blokes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We don't know what we're talking about. The three you historical to, <laughs> experts. <laughs> you come to us for a bit of fun and a oh, chuckle. Dear, you don't yeah. come to us for, uh, for facts. I did genuinely believe that, though. I think my dad must have told me growing up about the... Yeah. Polish cavalry charge on the German tanks. Ah, oh, right, okay. Then, you Fair know, enough. But I didn't. You check, live and learn. I didn't you? check my sources. You know, I've always thought it was true. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. It's fine. You don't come to us for facts. <laughs> <laughs> facts. Anyway, right. World War One oversimplified part two. Loved yep. part one. It was great. Really yep. good. Yeah. Very informative. Fun. Yeah. It was. So I guess we get into it then. Yep, go yeah, go for it. Come on. I'll be careful. Yeah, I'll, do, yeah. I'll just get my phone out and Google anything before I speak. <laughs> <laughs> With both sides stuck in a hard stalemate, they knew this war wasn't going to be about taking territory, but about simply wearing each other down. The Allies had plenty of men to expend from its overseas dominions, and the British also started a naval blockade, so Germany couldn't import stuff, like food. Neither side really wanted a long, grueling war, though, so they both thought of ways to break the deadlock on the Western Front. Idea number one, new frontiers. When the war first broke out, Australia was quick to take German New Guinea. The Allies also quickly jumped on Germany's colonies in Africa, and particularly in German East Africa, locals were enlisted as soldiers and carriers by both sides, leading to a tragic loss of life for the native Africans. Some new combatants entered the war as well. The Allies' new friends were Italy and Japan. Japan was busy building itself an empire, so it was more than happy to take away German islands and colonies in East Asia. Italy actually had an alliance with Germany and Austria-Hungary before the war, but after some tense relations, and then the Allies promising to give them some of Austria-Hungary's stuff, they switched sides. Italy opened up a front in the mountains here, but like everyone else, they were stuck in stalemate for most of the war. The Central Powers' new friend was a struggling empire in the Middle East. The Ottomans... Ottoman? The Ottoman were divided on whether to actually join the war or not, since they had been exhausted by the recent Balkan Wars. Some of the politicians who did want to Turkey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Empire. yeah. Mm -hmm. to join, went off on their own and fired some shells at Russia, and then came back and said, "Whoops, looks like we're at war now." The Ottoman entry into the war was of particular concern to the British, since the Middle East was full of oil, and Britain wanted all of that oil. First, the Ottomans tried to attack Russia in the Caucasus Mountains, but they weren't prepared for the cold, and many of them froze to death. Then they crossed the miles of desert to take the Suez Canal from the British, but that failed too. Then the Allies tried to take the Dardanelles at Gallipoli in a long and hard trench warfare campaign, but that also failed. The Ottomans blamed their initial losses on the ethnic Armenians living within Ottoman territory, and the resulting Armenian genocide led to the deaths of one and a half million people. Then the Germans sent spies into Afghanistan to try to convince the Arab tribes there to rise up in jihad against the British and attack India. But that plan failed, partly because the spies got bored, brewed their own alcohol, and got drunk, which is a bad thing to do in Afghanistan. All these new frontiers hadn't done much to change the war. Aware that the Allies had more men and supplies than them, the Germans knew they had to do something to break the stalemate. Before the war, there was a big conference that set out the rules of modern warfare. No chemical weapons, no killing civilians. Basically, <coughs> don't be jerks. The Germans held a meeting and decided to be jerks. Zeppelin air raids commenced over British cities. They also started attacking the Allied trenches with chlorine gas, and they used submarines to sink civilian ships. One such civilian ship was the Lusitania, which had 159 Americans on board when it was sunk, further swaying U.S. opinion against the Germans. Not to be completely unfair to the Germans, the Allies also engaged in chemical warfare soon after, and they had been hiding anti-submarine weapons on their civilian ships, which let the Germans justify their attacks. Meanwhile, Austria-Hungary still hadn't dealt with Serbia, so the Central Powers enlisted some help. Bulgaria wished it was bigger and was still bitter about losing the Second Balkan War. The Central Powers promised to make all of Bulgaria's wildest dreams come true if they helped, so they signed on, and together they knocked out Serbia. The Serbian troops retreated through Albania, which was neutral but had some ties to Austria-Hungary. So Austria-Hungary entered Albania in a friendly invasion to chase down the Serbians, many of whom escaped by sea. 
It's 1916, and a lot is happening. As if they didn't have enough enemies already, Germany added one more to the list. Portugal had been getting a bit chummy with the Allies behind the scenes, and Germany didn't like that one bit. Around the same time, the only sea battle of the war happened. Both sides had a new powerful class of battleships called Dreadnoughts, but they were so expensive to build that neither side wanted to risk losing them in a battle, so they kept them in port, except for one time when they had a big fight and a bunch of them got damaged, so they didn't try that again. The UK started conscripting men to the army, so they had plenty of reserves, which is just as well because the Western Front was about to get brutal. The longest and one of the bloodiest battles of the war started when the Germans launched an attack around the French city of Verdun. The French defended it desperately, leading to hundreds of thousands of casualties. Under pressure, the French called on its allies to do something to draw the Germans' attention away. So the British started their own long and brutal fight, the Battle of the Somme, with 60,000 British casualties on just the first day. It was also here that the British first used one crazy brand new piece of sci-fi technology. The yeah, wow. something like that. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> it's crazy, isn't it? 60,000 <clears throat> casualties in one day. Mm. That's incredible. The, when we were talking about, you know, what you learn in school and stuff, <clears throat> the Somme was quite a huge yeah. thing when yeah, I was in school. Was, that, yeah. that was really heavily taught. I think that's what Blackadder goes forth. That was supposed to be the Somme, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Yeah, the First World War. Uh, yeah. That tank's crazy looking though, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Yeah, right piece mm. of kit, that, isn't it? I'm just thinking, because it's not got like the big turret on the top of it. It literally yeah. just looks like machine guns Bottom on the, the side, doesn't it? Stuff. <clears throat> yeah, it's not. Someone want to be inside. That that is a <laughs> the Russians had been getting pushed <clears throat> back further and further into their own territory, but in response to the French call for help, they began a huge offensive and did really well until they ran out of supplies and got stuck. Seeing how well the Russians had been doing, Romania decided now would be a great time to jump in and win the war. And then they got pounded. The Greeks were fighting amongst themselves about whether to join the war or not. The king liked the central powers, while the prime minister wanted to join the allies. After a brief national schism, during which the country split into two, the king finally abdicated and the country reunited. With allied help, they began a new offensive. In the Middle East, Russia was pushing into Ottoman territory from the north. The British had also made a landing in Mesopotamia to protect Persia's oil fields, and they had also sent a small army up the Tigris River to try to take Baghdad, but the army got sieged in the town of Kut along the way, and eventually surrendered. A new offensive was launched from the south with all-out desert warfare. The offensive was aided by one famous British officer, better known as Lawrence of Arabia, who helped lead the Arab tribes in a revolt that wreaked <coughs> havoc on the Ottoman supply line. By the time 1917 rolled around, everyone was exhausted. There were mutinies in the French army, the German populace was starving, and the war had drained all of Russia's supplies. There was no clear winner, and it was still anyone's war. The only question now was, who was going to break first? And the answer was Russia. Tired of not eating, and mad that a crazy magic homeless guy was calling some of the shots, there was an uprising in Petrograd complete with riots and strikes. The riots turned into a full-scale revolution, and a new government over to the Tsar. Then a few months later, the Bolsheviks overthrew the new government, and they pulled Russia out of the war. This was great news for Germany, who now only had to focus on the Western Front. But there was still one problem. The pesky United States of America was looking increasingly like it was going to join the war. America had been selling supplies to the Allies throughout the war, and was getting super rich off the back of it, meaning it was in fantastic shape and was dangerous to the Germans. So Germany sent a telegram to Mexico saying, wouldn't it be crazy cool if you guys attacked America? But the British intercepted the message, showed it to the Americans, and that was the final straw. American troops began shipping out to Europe. This was terrible news for Germany, and they knew their only hope now was to force France and the UK to surrender before... We've already talked about, <clears throat> could Mexico invade America yeah, on a previous yeah. video, didn't oh, we, ages right. ago? <clears throat> They've got to get through Texas. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it was a big no. Yeah, good luck with that one. Do you ever, like, do you what, ever watch things like this and just wonder how much... There's a lot of coincidence going on, isn't mm. there? Like intercepting oh, yeah. that message in time to show it to the Americans, to the final nail yeah. in the coffin sort of thing, to get them into the war. I mean, a lot of these countries were self-serving as well, weren't they? A lot of them were looking at, actually, I won't mind that, pe mind that bit of land there or that bit of land. <laughs> and I think were, a lot of them were just using it as like a vehicle to, yeah. you know help themselves with it basically I think that's what's happening now it's exactly yeah, what true, yeah. I think that's what all war is even if it's under the guise of religion and other things a lot of the time it's not it's a land grab land resources I think, is, isn't it? I, think uh, I think over the years borders have changed quite a bit I suppose haven't they in various countries but history of the entire yeah. world isn't it yeah of course, when it yeah. shows literally just all the borders going like that yeah, it's just never more recently, recently as well in the Crimean Peninsula of course that's true yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't remember what happened there Neither do they. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
They all, uh, they all bobbed to Salisbury for a trip, didn't they? <laughs> they came back. And they knew their only hope now was to force France and the UK to surrender before the fresh American troops arrived. It was now or never, so they started one final attack. They converged their troops and hit hard at the Somme and pushed the Allies back. They hit a second time for the north, then again and again. With each hit, the Germans were spending more and more resources, while the Allies were getting better and better at repelling their attacks. By the fifth punch, the Allies held the line and even pushed back. With American troops now arriving in larger numbers, the Allies launched a counterattack, and that was it. The Central Powers were being pushed back on all fronts. Bulgaria collapsed first, followed by the Ottoman Empire, then Austria-Hungary, and finally on November 11, 1918, at 11 o'clock, Germany surrendered. At the peace treaty, Germany was forced to reduce its military, accept war guilt, and pay the bill for the war. After indescribable suffering and millions dead, the world learnt its lesson and never had such an awful war again. <laughs> wow. <For about 20 coughs> years. Incredible. What a waste. crazy stuff yeah. great channel that yeah it's brilliant well explained mm. as usual numbers wise it's just horrific isn't it mm. oh massively yes i mean just what a waste what was, what was the point <laughs> you know it just yeah. you know like they all say it is futile isn't it they didn't gain anything there at all did they <clears throat> well i say so. you know they just tried to land grab essentially didn't they and yeah. just have an empire mm. it didn't work came back to your core and then all the sanctions and stuff i think how long were they paying reparations or whatever it was called the Germans to, uh, don't know not it sure was, it was for a long time wasn't yeah. it I'm but, sure it was well, say, and they didn't learn <clears throat> did they and 20, 22 years 22 later, years later it yeah. was, mm. it, but, they went again I mean absolutely <laughs> crazy I think they were so by from what I've heard other people say because I can't state anything as fact on mm. a video <clears throat> but uh, it seems like morale was so low and obviously there was hyperinflation where people couldn't afford to eat couldn't afford yeah. to live there was no well that's what you saying about Russia wasn't it, it kind of like I don't know they went he was in, he was in a state of yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah spent up and no yeah. food no anything no money but I think that's that's the state Germany was in before the second world war wasn't it and then the Nazis came along Hitler came along and I think enrolled so many people in the army which gave people jobs mm. didn't they change the currency as well at the same time yeah I'm not sure to be honest stop Don't paying back yeah, debts not sure um, see how I, I said that as a question rather than mm. a statement <laughs> that's what you can expect from question now question mark yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm not sure everything is a question yeah I'm, I'm not uh, yeah yeah we didn't study we didn't study uh, World War One in school we just did World War Two. yeah and that was fucking years ago from what I remember yeah, I was going to say it's gone off memory a yeah. long, long long time ago yeah. Yeah, history was never a strong point for me. Yeah, no, same I, here. I, I found it more interesting after left school for the yeah, so it, It's strange, mm, but, uh, but I didn't do GCSE history. I didn't yeah. choose it. But then after school, documentaries like The World at War and stuff, I used to watch all the time. Yeah, absolutely mm. loved it. Yeah, yeah. So, for those history and geography stuff. were in the same category, so you can only have one or the other. Right. <coughs> yeah, so same here. Geography, actually, geography, I did geography. Yeah, I did history. history. I did history, not mm. geography. Yeah, I but, didn't uh, do either. <laughs> yeah. That's why I get it all wrong. <laughs> what countries that again? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, interesting. It's good. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah really good, good education. Brilliant. Great channel. Mm. Oversimplified. Yep. Hope you guys enjoyed that too. Don't forget like and subscribe. Hit the bell. We'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, Cheers. guys.